Hi, so my name is Josh, and uh, I've been watching this pretty neat site called FCCID.io lately. Um, they go through and screen scrape the FCC's database of products listed for approval and post all the details up online. And it seems like it could be fun to go through and show people what's in those, so I figured I would pick a few of my favorites from today's feed and uh, show them to you. So here we've got the Invintech Systems NFC Transmitter. Kind of caught my eye because I haven't seen something described as an NFC transmitter before, so I was curious about it. Um, and here we can see a bunch of details about the application by Invintech Systems, which the FCC gave the company code 07P. They're located in Massachusetts, here in the States. Um, and uh, based on the frequency list that they've got, they've got the 13.56 megahertz, which is what you'd expect for NFC or RFID. Then they've got 2402 to 2480, which is Wi-Fi-ish, um, or actually, sorry, Bluetooth-ish. That one's Bluetooth. Um, and then these next two in the 5 gigahertz range are 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And then down here, 2412 to 2462 seems like Wi-Fi, but it's a little bit weird. Um, so if we go through and then look at the, the other documents in this application, we can see that they've given a lot of stuff for people to see, um, including a manual. So we'll go and check that out first, just to see what this thing is. So if we look at the manual, um, we can see that it is a embedded serial to Wi-Fi module with 802.11, A, B, G, and N, Bluetooth 4.0, and NFC. So yeah, so it does have uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and NFC. So it's cool. Um, and we can scroll through this manual. Sorry for this being janky. This is just the way that site works and I haven't written my own yet. So this is all pretty boring. Just talks about the capabilities. Um, once we get down to page 11 though, it gets a bit more interesting for us because um, here's the module architecture. So it has the host interface over here, which is a Cortex M4. Um, which has two different crystals, 32 kilohertz and 16 megahertz, which suggests that it probably has some onboard real-time clock capabilities, which is kind of handy. And then it speaks um, uh, NFC, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi um, over three different buses to this Broadcom chip here, um, which does Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, which then goes through a little RF switch to output filters and then our output antennas. So the next thing we can look at is the internal photos for this device. Um, and if we look at it, we've got this thing. It's, uh, it's like that poem about fleas upon fleas upon fleas. We've got this little USB card here. And then on that, there's clearly this other module, which is the module that um, they're applying for, for certification on. Um, and then on top of that module is this other little module. So if we look actually at the, here's what it looks like uh, from the first part. But if we scroll down to the interesting thing, we get this. This is with the can off. Um, so that means that this is probably the Broadcom chip, um, which would make this and this the two crystals. Because it looks like that's X1 and that's X3 maybe or X2. It's really hard to read these little pixelated graphics. Um, and then this is going to be that Broadcom chip on its own little carrier board. Um, so they all sit on top of stuff. And they do have this onboard antenna here, which uses a little chip antenna. Um, and also it looks like a trace antenna. Um, that might also just be a matching network, but I'm really not sure, honestly. Uh, and they also offer this UFL connector. And they've done this really cute thing right here. It's hard to see in this picture, but I think in this other one it's a bit clearer. Um, in order to choose between the two antennas, they've got this little L, and you populate that with some component, um, probably a capacitor, um, could also just be a, a zero ohm jumper, um, and that's how you actually attach to your antenna, which is pretty neat. Um, so yeah, so this is a cute little device. I like this thing, um, and it does a lot of stuff. Uh, all in this little package. And then this little connector here, there's this little two-pin connector. 
is almost certainly going off to the NFC antenna because it's, it's really hard to fit a 13 megahertz antenna in something so small because this is a USB connector. So this thing is about thumb drive sized. Um, so th these people seem to do interesting things. So let's see what else they've got. Um, so we can click on this thing and see other things they've got. So this is the 341 that we were just looking at. And there's three different applications for that, but whatever, we don't really care. They do have one other thing, which is a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle. So let's take a look at that thing. So this is it. Um, this one is 2405 to 2480, which again, smells like Bluetooth. Um, so, and they've got a lot of good stuff in here, the manual, the photos, etc. So let's look at the manual real quick, just to see what that is. And when we do that, we see it's a Zigbee dongle, which, okay, 2.4 gigahertz, that makes sense. Um, this manual, unfortunately, is not nearly as helpful. It does show us the TI Smart RF Studio, which tells us probably what's on the inside, um, and tells us how to, you know, look at TI's happy clicky GUI for reading the registers. And that's actually all that's there. Um, I don't know what that error is. Oh, well. Um, so if we then go and look at the internal photographs of this device, of the 2531F, um, we get this little thing, which is pretty cute. Um, so here's the USB um, on the circuit board, and then there's just this little circuit board. Um, so on the top here, we've got this big IC, and that's a CC2531, which is a Texas Instrument RF chip. Um, and, you know, does a bit of everything. It's got its crystal right here. Um, lots of test points, which is super handy whenever you're poking around at stuff. Um, and that's about it. Um, and then on the back, it has this little thing, which if you do a lot of RF design, if you do a lot of RF design, you'll recognize that sky on there as being uh, Skyworks, who do a lot of... Uh, like RF switches and stuff like that. This looks like it's an active component because it's got 20 pins around it. There's five on each side of this QFN. Um, and then it goes out over this away. This is probably a saw filter or something like that. And again, out to a PCB antenna. And this is a pretty cute little antenna. Um, I don't actually know what this thing is. I, do, I haven't figured that out yet. Uh, but you also see that they've got little spots for um, lands for a can on this, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so if we go and look um, for the chips, this is that CC2531 um, system on chip for uh, 802.15.4 slash Zigbee, um, which is just, you know, standard issue chip for TI. Um, they're three bucks, four bucks in quantity 1000, which is not too bad. Um, and then if we look at that other part, it took a little bit of sorting out to figure out what it was, but it turns out that it's a Skyworks SE2438T, which is a 2.4 gigahertz Zigbee front-end module. And this thing is super nice. Um, it's got built-in, um, the antenna connects over here. It's got the little capacitor to couple in all there. And then it's got an RF switch, which can send it either from a power amplifier through a low-pass filter. You see how there's two bars and the top one is crossed out. So it blocks the high, lets the low through. So a power amp through a low pass filter out to the antenna, or the signal can come in from the antenna through this low noise amplifier and come back. And then there's another RF switch here for whichever we wanna do. Oh, and there's one other RF switch here for bypassing the amp. And then this goes back to our um, transmit receive positive and negative pair. Um, and this is a Bollin, which is a little transformer to match uh, the input impedance with the output impedance of these two circuits. And all of this is inside of that module, which is really nice. Um, so, and then it's got logic control here and it, it looks like these are relatively reasonable. Um, some of these things want like 1.5 kilohertz um, tones to control them, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, anyway, so that's, that's this device. Um, it's got lots of neat stuff in it. Um, it's got lots of neat tricks in it, and uh, I think there's a lot that we can learn from it um, in terms of chips that you can use, etc. So 
uh, from these two pictures on the internal, um, you can get some idea of the, the pinouts of things and see roughly how they're doing stuff to see how these two pieces would work together to build this system. And that's without ever having one of these in your hand, which is kind of neat. So another device that looks interesting is the E-Lead Electronic Company Tire Pressure Monitoring System. These are pretty neat because uh, they let your car detect the pressure in your tires without running wires in. Because if you think about it, putting wires into the tires is difficult. So um, this is a wireless transmitter. It runs on 315 megahertz on the dot. Um, and this one has a user's manual, some external photos, internal photos, etc. So let's look at the external photos on this really quick, just to see what it looks like. Or actually, sorry, the manual. Manual is a good spot to start. So this one, uh, the manual is the installation instructions. And it's unusual to see an electronic device that requires a torque wrench at four Newton meters um, and a hex socket. Um, so this is basically the process of you dismount the tire and original sensor from the wheel rim, clean it up, and then mount this thing into the tire. Um, so that's, that's what that is. Let's have a look at the actual device and see what, what it looks like and see what we can see. So here is the external photos for this thing. Um, not a whole lot to look at, but you can see it's got the Schrader valve, your little tire valve thing coming up through this kind of cylindery shaped thing. And there's this little bump right there and that's gonna be the seal with the, the tire itself. And then it comes out through here, etc. And it's got micro USB, which is really weird. Um, and then a circle here, which is, smells like a battery or something. Um, and the other thing that we can see is the transmit antenna is in the valve. So it's actually using the Schrader valve itself as the antenna, which is pretty neat. Um, so yeah, so this is the overall package for this device. So now we can look at the guts of it with the internal photos. Um, so here's the top view of the whole thing all assembled and there's that round bit which is in fact a battery. There's our valve. There's some headers that are just terribly stuck in, like they're just pasted it on. Um, and if we scroll down, we'll see the device flipped over and out of it. And notice that there's no holes for those headers here. I'm pretty sure that they're actually right under the IC here, which is terrifying. Um, but this IC, a um, little bit of Googling on this one too, but that's Infineon. And it's the SP37025, yada yada. Um, so we'll come back to that in a second. But there's also this thing, which is weird. Why is there this big inductor there? And also, why is there micro USB, um, which has an O-ring on it? Like, it's just weird. Um, so we look, we've got this big inductor. We've got um, 60 megahertz oscillator for the whatever is in here. Um, and also note, that's the only IC on this whole thing. The back is not loaded. This is a single-sided load board with nothing but, but uh, one side with components. Um, so everything must be in this IC. We've got this little antenna here, or whatever it is. It's weird to see an inductor that big. Um, our crystal, and this is a, it's labeled Q1, and I, I don't honestly know what that one's for just yet. Um, but yeah, so that's this thing. Um, it's got this one IC on it, and this weird inductor over here. So if we go and Google around, we can find documentation on a, the Infineon SP37. So um, this diagram is showing us that it's actually got two dies inside of the package. One is a sensor die. It's a MEM sensor for pressure and accelerometry, uh, accel acceleration, accelerometry. Huh. Um, going over to an ASIC with an 8051, some ADCs, um, temperature sensor, voltage sensor, all this stuff, uh, RF transmitter, which we expect to see, and then LF interface, which if we go and actually read the words, we see this LF receiver down here. And what that is, it turns out, 
is there's actually 125 kilohertz data channel going into these sensors to wake them up, pull them, and do all sorts of stuff. Um, and if we look down here, like here's the pinout of the thing. Um, we got some GPIOs. We've got what I assume is our 300 megahertz signal out. Um, battery, ground, crystals, and then our low frequency uh, receiver pair. Um, and it's 8051, so it's Harvard architecture and all sorts of goofy stuff about the memory layout. Um, also, also, it has bond wire surveillance, which is really kind of fun. Uh, I assume this is tamper evidence, something like that. Um, so now we can see the multiband UHF transmitter. It's uh, 315 megahertz and 434 megahertz. Uh, it does ASK and FSK for the actual modulation. And for the encoding of the data, you can do chip, Manchester, and biphase encoding, which is pretty nice. Um, and so it's got you know PWM, non return to zero, etc. It also has a built-in uh, random number generator, so it can do code rolling, which is pretty neat. Um, I don't know that anybody uses that, and I haven't actually looked at this yet, but um, it'd be interesting to look at. Um, then for the LF receiver, we've got this 125 kilohertz um, system. And it basically you know, sits there and runs all the time and can do CPU wake-ups whenever it sees a pole come in. So this thing can sit there and do nothing for a while. Um, you know, go basically to sleep and conserve the battery while waiting for the, the car central computer to pull it to send data back. So it's pretty neat. Um, something I want to look into. Um, and then it's also got a whole lot of weird stuff built into its firmware. So it's got like, you know, CRC8. Somewhere else it mentions CRC16, so it can do checksums. Um, it's got self-tests. It's got clock tests. It's got a whole bunch of compensation stuff in it. It's, it's really quite a neat little IC. Um, and I forget what it was. I, I don't remember if I got the price on this, actually. Um, so if we go do this. So Infineon site is terrible. Um, so this is it, the tire pressure sensor. Um, so I forget how to look for pricing on this. Here we go. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't remember what pricing on this is going to be, but it's pretty neat. It's got all this stuff on there. Oh, and that's actually one other thing to, to mention. Um, how does it measure pressure? So on the IC die, it's got this little hole that goes through the epoxy, through some metal, and down onto a Wheatstone bridge to measure pressure um, on it, to measure the actual force exerted on that area, um, which is just pretty neat. Um, and that's that's how this thing's actually measuring temperature. Um, or sorry, not temperature, pressure. Uh, temperature's on the ASIC die and is almost certainly a voltage uh, detection circuit. Um, and we also figured out what this big goofy thing here is. This big inductor, L2, is there for um, the low frequency stuff. So, I think that's it for today. This went on a bit longer than I expected. Um, I'm going to have a look at this and upload it and get some feedback from folks and see what, what could be good about it, what's not so good about it. Um, feel free to leave comments below. Um, I'll try and answer questions. I don't know how much time I can spend on specific questions here. Uh, if you know about this kind of thing, please look at the, the comments and answer questions you see there. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who could learn a lot of stuff from this sort of a, a process. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, thanks for helping each other out with learning more about the insides of electronics. Bye.